Hello. So, um, last week I didn't get a uh, video up because, well, frankly, the pickings were a little slim last week. Um, but I did get one or two things, and instead of just doing one video for a couple of things, I waited. And uh, this week I picked up a few other things, and so we're doing a full, full video, basically, of what essentially is just two weeks pickup. Um, some of it came from Goodwill Thrift and Salvation Army. Uh, quite a bit garage sales, um, and uh, another smaller thrift store pickup too. So we'll just go over it, start today. Um, it was a lot, uh, surprisingly, on the weekend at garage sales of uh, vintage toys. So uh, if you know me or have been in the store at all, uh, you know that I carry and uh, collect myself a lot of vintage toys from when I was a kid. Uh, in the 70s and 80s um, and uh, like me uh, in the 80s I was uh, I won't say obsessed but I loved my wrestling back in the day and so it was pretty exciting first thing I found this week actually at thrift store is this WWF wrestling uh, stars board game uh, I haven't opened it up because at a thrift store naturally they um, they did tape it shut it sounds like a lot of the stuff is in there. Um, the thing with board games is, um, I'm just trying to look and see here if I can find a date on it, but I would say this is probably around 1984, 1985. Um, it's from Milton Bradley. The thing with board games is, is that um, even if all the parts aren't there, uh, if you're a person who sells on eBay, you can always just uh, sell the parts. And uh, you can usually do pretty well with that. I've done that with other things before. Um, if you're complete or near complete, I would I wouldn't bother. But if you're if you're missing quite a few pieces, it's just easier. You get rid of the board game itself, and you just sort of sell the parts. And a lot of people do that because there's other people out there who are close and want to complete their uh, their game. So yeah, I picked that up. It's a great little thing. There's a Hulkster right there. We're gonna yeah. Anyways. Uh, continuing with the wrestling theme, I was at a garage sale. It was like a big uh, community church sale type thing outdoors. Um, and I picked up a whole whack of these uh, LJN uh, large size rubber wrestlers. Um, most of them aren't worth a ton of money. Um, you're basically looking at, you know, maybe $10, $15 each depending on condition. However, with these, uh, the later editions, I think it's the third release and fourth release are a little harder to find and go up in value and I lucked out and I had a couple of those in here um, the biggest one uh, the reason why I grabbed it initially was because I know that this uh, Kabbalah Kamala um, I don't know his name uh, figure is one I think was the third release and that's uh, worth a little bit more money probably in this condition around 30 maybe 40 dollars Maybe a bit more, uh, but the big one is Vince McMahon himself, and this one is in nice shape too. Um, most of the paint is still there. Um, this one can sell from seventy-five up to one hundred and fifty, um, depending on condition. Now, um, you'll see these toys. The problem with a lot of them is, is that the paint rubs off, and you can see that kind of stuff you can clean up. But where the actual paint is missing on any of these, which it doesn't appear on that guy. There you go, junkyard dog. Um, there's nothing you can really do about that. Um, so, yeah, that was a pretty good pickup. The uh, continuing with toys. Most people might not know what this is, but clearly, if you don't, we had a different childhood. This is uh, 1975, I believe, from Kenner. It is the engine that um, Steve Austin, the six million dollar man toy. Uh, came with that was he could lift it to show you know that he was bionic um, again parts are always essential for toys people are always missing the parts this one actually looks like it has a little bit of glue on it so it might have broke apart and somebody glued it back together somebody's still gonna want that so yeah and one for the ladies um, that was a bit sexist but you know uh, a Britney doll now I honestly, not gonna lie, didn't know they did Britney dolls. I knew they did Spice Girls, but I did not know they did Britney. But apparently there's a whole line of Britney dolls and um, because of 
Britney's uh, sort of newsworthiness as of late. Um, I imagine that these kind of things are going to go up in price. I haven't even looked it up. I can't imagine what it is. This one is in the box and parts of it are still sealed, but I think it's been taken out and played with. Even still, somebody will want it. Um, you know, the whole Free Britney movement. Um, but this is a cool one too. Uh, Cher. In 1976, Mego, uh, because Cher was the biggest thing, they had the Sonny and Cher TV show. And I remember my parents actually went and saw Sonny and Cher in concert um, in Toronto, I believe. And uh, they put out dolls for Sonny and Cher, Mego did. And uh, the designer, Bob Mackey, who was one of the big designers of the 70s, designed all the costumes and outfits for the little things. So people who are into fashion just collect those on their own. This one, I believe, is the growing hair version. Not 100%, but uh, she has um, kind of a short cut and then parts of a long cut in there, too. I don't know how it works, but figure that out as we go along. Um, I'm not, I don't see a lot of toys from the like pre 1980s anymore. Like, it just it doesn't happen unless you're in like a toy shop type thing. Uh, so, it's always nice to um, pick that stuff up. And speaking of pre 1980s, this Fisher Price wind up TV that's that's I would probably think late 60s. Um, if I look, it'll be on there, but it, it's got a wooden frame structure, some plastic, and it does work when you wind it up. Let's see if I can get her going. Oh, doesn't want to do it now. Oh, you know what? Oh, there, it goes. there we go. Okay, never mind. How's that for? There we go. There we go. It moves along like a TV. That was the idea of it. And um, you wind it up. <laughs> now it doesn't want to work. All right. But yeah, basically the thing would uh, scroll across like a TV and has nurture rhymes on there and a little music box. Just a cute piece. Uh, what else do we grab then? 1980s Pac-Man mug. Or beer glass or soda glass um, for the younger ones. I sell through any of the stuff I get, anything video game related from that era, I sell through in the store quite a bit, so I pick it up when I can. Um, for those who know me, they know that I am a failed musician, um, but I collect gear. And uh, these are probably just going to end up staying with me more than anything, but I don't find vintage pedals or guitar stuff very often anymore. Uh, it used to show up once or twice a year uh, at garage sales or even in thrift stores, um, but these were at a garage sale and they were reasonably priced. Some things you want to look for, most of the early stuff is usually uh, made in Japan. So you try to look for the made in Japan mark on this one. Um, this one is Honer International doesn't have the made in Japan mark on it but I know for a fact this company is it's a, a wah pedal uh, multi-effect kind of cool but these ones you can always check uh, boss pedals I believe started were part of Roland initially yeah no there you go and um, you're always trying to find the early versions which are made in Japan they went to Taiwan and I think they eventually ended up like China where most stuff ends up being manufactured in the end but these early ones are what people are looking for. And this is a, a nice early one too. Um, same thing, made in Japan, product of Roland. Um, that's the Tiwa, so it's basically an envelope follower. And then this Ibanez, same thing again, you're looking on the bottoms almost always, and there it is, made in Japan. Um, there are different serial numbers. I mean, if you want to get into it, you can really... Um, go online and do a lot of research about this stuff. Um, basically, the, they're really easy to do because the model number is usually right on the front. Um, you can see it right there, the DD3, TW1. That one is the C9, or is it CS9 stereo chorus? Um, and you can just do, people are always asking me, how do you know what stuff is worth? Well, stuff is only worth what somebody's gonna pay for it. So you want to try to find a place that you can see what things are actually selling for. And the best way still uh, is eBay. A lot of people say, no, no, that's you know not accurate. But it really is. It's a giant free and open market. Um, you, but the key to it is, 
is you click the solds button. So you type in the information in the search bar, you hit uh, the see solds button, and it shows you what stuff is selling for. Uh, it shows up usually in green. And then you can go along and compare condition with your item and get a general idea of what your stuff is worth. Um, it's, it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, a lot of people sometimes just look, I know a lot of thrift stores, just look at the, um, they type the item in and they just look at the buy it nows. Well, that's not necessarily what stuff is selling for. That's what somebody is asking for something. And you know what? I can ask a thousand dollars for this guy with a buy it now. But it's never going to sell. It's clearly not worth a thousand dollars. But if you hit solds, you can see what it actually sold for and get a pretty good idea. So there's that little bit of information. Um, that's just another one. This one's a little later, but it is, uh, I think, the first generation of this uh, distortion processor the Korg put out. So, yeah. And speaking of processors, <laughs> this is kind of something that I, one of those things that I bought, and I'm sort of like, I have no idea if it's anything anybody been interested in, but I love it. I love old computer imagery, and uh, I imagine that these two things showing early early computer systems probably pictures from the 70s because it has tape preparation unit um, anybody who's sort of a modernist would probably love to have these up on their wall because um, they're just so sort of modern tech that has just died but still looks great um, not super expensive or anything like that but just just a couple of really interesting pieces um, from days gone by and speaking of interesting pieces from days gone by, this, again, found this on the wall of a thrift store. And if you look very carefully right there, come up, it's Ami Dupont. Now, Ami Dupont was a, um, a Victorian sculptor and um, living in Belgium. And he met an American woman. Uh, they got married. And he was one of the early adopters of photography, and he was very smart. Um, they moved to the United States, and he ended up opening up a uh, portrait gallery, um, I, I believe on Fifth Avenue. And he became famous because he started doing portraits of what were the stars of the day, which would have been your opera stars, um, your dance hall stars, uh, people like Lillian Russell were uh, some of the bigger ones on there and other actors and stage actors and actresses who um, I think he actually was the photographer for the New York Metropolitan um, Opera which had just opened a few years before he set up shop so um, his portraits are actually quite rare unfortunately this one isn't named but uh, I might be able to use Google search to find out who it is and it's still, I believe, in its original frame. That is very much an Art Nouveau style. It's uh, plaster, gessoed plaster on wood. If you look at the back here, peel that back a bit, and you can just see the corner there. Pretty rare, not gonna lie. Don't know what kind of value that is, but uh, if nothing else, just an interesting piece of history from, and it, and it is one of the originals, it is marked. Um, so it'll be interesting to find out who that is. What else did we get this weekend? Or this week, I guess. Oh, these. Uh, just a couple of dome lights. They are aluminum. Normally, I'd pick them up just as, because people are always looking for these types of things. But the neat thing about this one is it's hard to make out from here. Now, one of these labels inside, links, you can just make out Lightolier Canada. Now, I've talked about Lightolier before. They are a really well-known uh, lamp maker, particularly modernist in style. Uh, they hired some of the better designers. Again, I'd have to look these up and try to see if it, if it is one of uh, the more known designers. Um, but if not, it's a good company. If they've got some scratches and dents, I'll either get them repainted or just leave them for somebody else who might just want them in sort of a, a loft type setting where you don't mind a little bit of grunge on there um, but again like anytime you see a light all light it is worth picking up um, 
they're not always labeled so again do some research places to look are, are first dibs first dibs is not good for pricing uh, but it can provide information first dibs pricing is just out of this world but uh, it can provide some good information um, what else oh yeah pyrex again same thing this was in a a tiny little thrift shop um, and it's probably the reason why a lot of people don't go to it uh, it's kind of a hole in the wall and these were in the showcase and they are the Amish butter print Pyrex and they're the Friggy sets and what makes these special is the condition the graphics are still nice and glossy they haven't been run through dishwashers as you can see the edges there's no chips and they all come with their original lids these were fridge sets or commonly known as fridges usually you would have three or four of those uh no yeah and uh a couple of larger slightly larger size ones um and pyrex needs to be really really hot right now some of the rare pieces are going for astronomical sums in online auctions um again good way to research that stuff is just type in pyrex hit solds and then you can sort it from um, most expensive to least expensive and you can just scroll through scroll through and it's an educational experience you can learn what is worth looking out for um just last week i was in a, a uh, i'm on a facebook group um for people who thrift and in the united states at uh, one of the bins outlet stores where they sell everything by the pound a lady found a very rare piece of pyrex it wasn't smashed up or anything had the original lid and uh, she auctioned it off and i last i looked it was like two three hundred dollars um, so some of them are these aren't that uh, these are never going to get that but the blue amish butter print bowls you can get up to a couple hundred dollars for a nice set but condition is everything with these if you have any chips if you have any marks the gloss is gone or the actual pattern itself is starting to fade away it drops dramatically in value so the key always with these is um, condition so yeah there's a nice set and keeping with the three that's one of the british bulldogs theme of uh pyrex oops and that one probably now has a chip now we're good um this one uh i forget the name people commonly call it crazy daisy but it's not actually called crazy daily daisy um I think it might be spring blossom that might be the name of the pattern it's a good large size you can always tell there's the pyrex marks on it um, same thing here this one is nice glossy bright colors um, unfortunately it doesn't have a lid but again same thing always keep your eye out for lids as well you can pick up uh, this is an older maiden Czechoslovakia hurricane lamp people like these things as just decorative pieces um, if they're cheap enough, I'd say pick them up, um, especially when they have the glass still intact. And that one probably, you know what, would be functional. Um, I'm not going to fire it up, but you know what, somebody who's a little more adventurous than me might be able to. Um, another piece of uh, West German pottery. Not a great one, not too fantastic. Um, uh, for those who know, I've told you the 806 is the model number or the shape number and then the 17 I think that's 17 actually I can't tell what number is the second number is always the size so it gives you uh, I think so, uh, in centimeters so I don't think that one's 17 centimeters well, you know what maybe it is yeah, it might be 17 centimeters again nice piece no chips no cracks it's not spectacular you, you, with, with West German pottery the brighter the colors the better honestly the frankly the uglier as um, most people would say uh, the better um, this one's pretty plain but it does have a nice lava glaze to it which is something that a lot of people look for and another piece of this time Scandinavian pottery and it looks so plain that you just wouldn't know but it's a bull planter with its dish and that is the company. I don't know if it's Arabia or Arabia. Um, it's made in Finland. Now, Arabia um, was a company that did a lot of great enamel pieces, uh, cookware, bowls, things like that, but they also did pottery. And again, they're the kind of uh, company that hired just some of the best designers, and their pieces do command quite a bit of money. 
I was shocked to look this one up and it, it, some of it's selling for upwards of $40, $50. Um, I've seen the, I remember these kind of planters in the 70s in plastic, but this is the sort of origin of those um, with that bowl on the bottom. Very, very simple lines. Um, and that's what people are looking for. And then last, is it last? Yeah, last but not least, it's just this little folding, sort of mid-century modern styled uh, magazine rack. Um, what a lot of people are doing with these now, actually, is you can fit records in them. So let's just grab this Escabel, Strings of Flame, and you can just put them up there like that and have it by your turntable. And you can flip through your smaller record collection. And uh, this one obviously needs some cleaning uh, but it's a nice shape, a nice design. Uh, I haven't found any markings on it or anything like that. I'm not totally sure what the wood is, uh, but either way, clean it up, give it a good oiling, a little bit of sanding, it'll, it'll turn out really nice. So yeah, basically that's it. Uh, like I said, pickings were a little slim the last uh, couple of weeks, but uh, this week made up for it. So I put the two of them together. Um, if you guys could subscribe to the channel because again I was looking at the data that they provided me and that 90 something like 90 percent of the people who are watching these videos are not subscribed even if just like half of you guys could that would be super helpful for me um so yeah if you could just hit the like button or you know what if you dislike it uh what I'm doing hit that dislike button but please tell me why write in the comments what I can do to improve this for anybody um, and yeah, I mean, I'm going to keep doing it just because I kind of find it fun. And I actually have found that I like going back and looking at, uh, the stuff I had because I do sell a lot of this stuff through at the store and I often forget some of the cool finds that I come across. So this is kind of like a nice little time capsule, if you will. Oh wait, what's the name of the store? Time capsule. That's a nice way to end things. Hope you all have a good week. Bye.